Hi everyone, it's Jono here. I'm going to uh, teach you guys how to do a 32 frames walk cycle using um, the basic uh, Monty rig that you can find online, creativecrash.com. It's a pretty basic rig, it's as simple as you can get, it's just a pretty much a bouncy ball with um, legs on it. And he's really he's got a he's got a really nice uh, stretch factor uh, controller on the top, so you can um, squash and stretch him all you like. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get cracking, and I'm gonna show you what it will hopefully look like when it's done. Cool little character. He's got he's got a double bounce feature in the walk there. Um, he's also been animated on a secondary layer for uh, this 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 down point here on the graph edit on the curve of his y-axis so uh, yeah we're gonna fix pops we're gonna fix um, knees and things like that we're gonna do foot rolls simple basic walk uh, to get everyone new to animation started okay okay so Everyone has their basic Monty rig in their scenes, hopefully, or whichever whichever character you're gonna get. This will work with any walk cycle. Um, you you pretty much start in the same format. You start at the same with the drive from the hips. So you'll normally start by uh, positioning the hips um, up and down, and then the feet. Then you'll start doing rotations left and right, and uh, you can go from there. Uh, a few things to note, you'll notice that my scene is a little bit different to yours if you're just opening Maya for the first time. I work with, um, my manipulators are, are a lot thicker in size, also my timeline is a lot, um, a little bit bigger. And if I was to set a keyframe, say at frame 20, let's just set a keyframe there, you'll notice that my key tick sizes, if you were to set of keyframe are bigger than in your scene if you haven't customized it yet. So if you'd like, uh, I'm just going to go through quickly, if you go down to the right hand side here to animation preferences, make sure you've got auto key on by the way. And uh, under settings, time slider, just change the height to 2. You don't want 4, 4 is a bit, it's a bit <laughs> excessive, so let's just go to 2. Key tick size, it's the thickness of your keyframes and I have mine on 4 um, my playback is in, in all windows I'm playing back at real time frames per second and I'm just making sure my settings for film are also at 25, uh, 24 frames per second Sorry. then I go up here to my manipulators and yeah I've just rounded them off uh, global scale uh, you can change global scale by pressing plus and minus anyway on your keyboard and the handle sizes are thick, uh, line pick size is thicker and uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, the other things you you don't really have to um, worry too much about uh, in under animation settings I've got auto key on and I key modified attributes um, I've got independent Euler curves and I've got weighted tangents on by default because I like to have uh, that, that, um, that option. Okay so just save your preferences once you've done that and then go file save preferences here and then you when you close down Maya, Maya will remember everything for you. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I'm just going to delete that keyframe, right click and delete. Now I'm going to go through this lesson as if you guys are learning um, Maya for, for the first kind of, you know, this is your first walk so there's going to be some things I'll I'll go over a few times especially when I pop up the graph editor um, so uh, let's get started. Oh, one more thing. Uh, I've got hotkeys. You'll notice that I'll pop open my graph editor. It'll just magically appear and then I can close it magically appear again. That's because I've got hotkeys set up for that. If I press G, my graph editor will um, pop up. Same with O for outliner, H for hyper shade, uh, eventually when it decides to load and so on. And you can do that by going into Window, Settings, Preferences, and you go down to um, Hotkey Editor. And in there, you just browse down to the Window option. So you, on the left-hand side, your Category, you go down to Window, 
and you go on the right hand side you choose graph and you just input G in here for G for graph and then just assign it uh, mine's already assigned and then you go down for outliner uh, let's go out of outliner and then just press O assign and then for hyper shade uh, H you know you get the idea anyway and it might give you a, a saying oh no it's connected to something else but if you're going to do animation then I just advise you to uh, do it this way okay then just save close okay so let's begin first things first we want to go into our side view so you just hold on spacebar middle mouse button and then drag it to the right if you go really fast it's you get used to it you just spacebar perspective top and front so if you the more you get uh, used to that kind of thing instead of space barring out and trying to find a window and going into it you can um, uh, you can just uh, space bar hold it down middle mouse and go to the side view straight away okay so make sure you extend your timeline your probably your settings are probably at 24 so just drag this little um, slider here to 32 and we're going to get started with Monty so here we are in the side view and I want you to all select your hip controller depending on your character just select the hip and what we're going to do just something to remember frame 1 and frame 32 are going to be exactly the same if you were to step through your keys um, can hit the arrow across uh, next just above alt and control you can hit those two arrows when you have a keyframe there they should uh, be identical nothing should uh, twitch or move or pop they should everything everything should have the same values on 1 and 32 but when you come to play blast your shot because those two are the same and if you're going to loop it you're going to want to play blast to or render out to frame 31 so that frame 1 is the next frame in front of 31 if you get what I mean it just loops and loops and loops okay so let's extend to 32 for now let's go to frame 1 and let's just select that root control and set a keyframe on there okay you can set a keyframe just by pressing S on your keyboard now I know that he is going to have his legs spread in a contact position you have two contact positions and one in the middle so you have one step up to frame 17 16, 17, and um, one more step at the end, which is the same as frame 1. So you're pretty much just animating to here, and then you're doing the opposite of what you've done here, here in this area. So in that case, I need to bring his his body weight down, so I'm going to bring it down to roughly, uh, I would say, that, that height. And I'm just going to go into my top view Oh, hold on, let's just go into perspective and I'm going to grab one of those feet that one for example let me go back into my side view and I'm just going to go to frame 1 and just move that one forward okay, it doesn't really doesn't really matter okay oh if you wanted to copy and paste a keyframe in Maya 2013 all you have to do is just middle mouse button anywhere on your timeline and then just press S and that will copy the value of your um, controller and you'll see result 6 it'll copy the value that it was at with you could copy basically this value here and just paste it here it doesn't have to be an exact keyframe on it so frame 1 I've just got that foot uh, in front there I am also going to go into perspective again and select that foot and my side view spacebar middle mouse to the right and drag that back okay roughly so we're in a what's called contact uh, position for a walk okay now that you've done that you can just set a keyframe again and um, it's quite hard to select these controllers so you have to kind of pop back backwards and forwards into um, your side view 
if you're more comfortable you can just stay in perspective view for now in fact let's all just do that so we can select these easier instead of going backwards and forwards okay so obviously frame 1 and 32 are going to be the same so I'm just going to select those two holding down shift select those ones and the, the, the main hip control and I'm just going to middle mouse button to 32 and I'm going to press S and that's going to copy 1 to 32 without me doing anything really so nothing still nothing's happening there's no animation we've just basically posed him out into a contact position so now that we've got that let's work on our hips and this case I do want you to go into the side view because it, it'll give you a better idea of um, what's exactly happening rather than having a different perspective on it so frame 1, 17 and 32 are going to be roughly this um, height Okay, what's going to happen is as he's coming as his foot is landing his weight is going to come down he's going to take the weight onto that foot Okay, this foot is going to move underneath him and push him up again and that'll push him up just before he gets to um, frame 17 so his peak will be somewhere around frame 12 okay so let's do the same on the next side so let's say five frames later 17 18 19 20 21 22 and let's just do the same you can either just select six middle mouse to 22 and press s again and that will just copy and paste the same value don't worry that sometimes we might be four frames off or five frames off in my opinion um, I like to I like to have my animation uh, offset I don't like to have it exactly the same no one likes to see the exact same kind of walk anyway it's just uh, very robotic and it's not uh, natural so now that we've done the downs and then the down what we're going to do is we're going to just slide these feet backwards and forwards pretty easy stuff all we have to do is go to frame 17 and drag it in line with that other foot there and if you have auto key on down here it should just key it for you already that's all you have to do and then it will just go back again okay and what we want to do is we want to um, select that other foot uh, let's just grab that foot there and again I'm just going to go to frame 17 into my side view and I'm just going to move it forwards if you want to be more specific all you have to do is select that other foot and go to its main pose which is here so you can copy that value translate Z, you're moving in Z you can just right click and copy and you can paste it onto um, onto this foot at frame 17 though, not at frame 1 frame 17 because that's when the foot is um, doing doing the other the other side so I'm just going to paste that there and you can see I was a little bit off so it's, at this stage it's not really that important okay so let's go back into our side and see what's going on okay so it looks a bit you know he's kind of walking but he's sliding he's sliding all over the place and that's that's never really good so how are we going to fix that well there are loads of ways to do it a lot of people like to do foot rolls and um, uh, toe rolls and stuff but I like to just get the rotation in there first and um, keep the translation moving backwards even after the foot has left the ground the foot is still moving backwards let me explain so at frame one as the weight is moving down here onto onto this leg we are going to keep moving this foot backwards so it is still going to be moving backwards like that and we're going to start to lift it up in the air just a smidge and we're going to rotate it just until that point where that knee is starting to break there okay and you can keep it going back like that okay and as you as you're coming into what's called the passing position which is around about 
frame 10, 11, 12, depending on your character, you want to have that foot in the air, roughly uh, that height, and just rotate it um, so that X is facing downwards. You can do, you can type a 90 if you want, but again, you don't have to be specific. So, what's happened is we've just kept that foot moving back, which is nice. A lot of people don't do that. They just decide, oh no, it's not supposed to go back. I'm going to move it forwards all of a sudden, and that's not how you how you walk. There's like a, a lag time at the back here. Okay. Now you're going to notice that the contact position isn't as as how we would basically how we would land. So what I want you to do is again we can rotate that foot there and what we don't want to have is we don't want to have this knee bending on the contact position so we can push that forwards a little bit this is when we start to tweak our animation um, to a point where where it's getting better we, oh, we're getting a flip here Let's see what's going on Just check my graph, and I got a rotation error. I don't know if anyone else says that. If you ever you get a, a an issue like that in your graph editor, you can always just smooth your tangents out, and that should most of the time fix your issue. I'm not sure why this is happening just yet. There is probably a weighted tangent on something. So let's just double check everything's okay. It's looking a bit better. Okay. So it's probably because we copied and pasted the keys. Okay. So this is the contact position. And what I always teach is two frames later, depending on your character again, uh, we need to flatten that foot. So let's just go up to rotate X and we're just going to zero that out. Okay, you also want to make sure that Y is also zeroed, so he's exactly on the floor. And then that foot's just going to do the rest of the stuff for you. Y is going to do the rest of the work for you. And then we're going to go back to 1 and it's going to just do that. So if we play that back now, we've got a foot. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to copy and paste those values onto the other controller. Okay, so in perspective, it's pretty much um, easier to select that way. What we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste the values from frame 1 to frame 17, and we're going to copy and paste them onto our other foot at frame 17 to 32. Obviously, because it's the opposite from that, this is the first step on that side, and we want to copy and paste those values on this side of the other foot, if that makes sense. Once you start, I like to do this now whilst we've got um, basic rotations in X and translations in Z. Once you start doing rotations in um, in Z, in your Z axis, then Maya, when you copy and paste it, it'll paste the same value so that your foot will go that way instead and you'll have to just go in and minus you see it's all minus minus you just have to make them plus but uh, you can just key them in some circumstances anyway okay so I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to um, left mouse button from frame 1 to 17 okay and I'm just going to right click and copy now I'm going to go to my once it's stored in my cache I'm going to go to this foot here and I'm going to right click over frame 17 and I'm going to paste it. What's going to happen is you'll notice that there's a keyframe that's popped up at the end here and this is because obviously 32 if you divide it by um, um, if you d divide it in half it's 16 but because we're starting at 1 17 there's always this odd difference I think 32 frame walk cycles are great but um, sometimes it is a little tricky to do. This is why I wanted to do the 32 frame one because I want you guys to understand how uh, to come across and to fix these kind of errors. 
not errors but um, situations so we know that 33 which was copied is frame 17 from the other foot now 17 has got the same value as 32 so we know that these two keyframes are the same so I can either delete frame 32 uh, frame 33 or I can um, delete frame 32 but we're doing a 32 frame walk cycle so we're just going to delete frame 33 in our, in our case so let's just delete that okay let's just scale our timeline back okay now what we want to do is we want to copy the value of the contact position which is frame 17 copy and we just paste it to 32 of the other foot okay so 17 and 32 they should be uh, the same now if you switch between okay so that's that side done and you'll notice that the foot has now got all the rotations and everything from the other foot what's going to happen here is because these two we haven't pasted um, those values so we can just middle mouse to frame 1 and press S that will copy the values across and then all we need to do is just go two frames to the right and just zero out our rotation on that foot and Maya will do the rest of the work for us so go back into our side view and we will see that we've got a basic walk it's not as great as everyone will like it to be right now, but that's pretty much as basic as it gets. Okay. So, what do we do now? I hear you ask. All right. Well, there's a lot of things. There's there the stretching of the knees and the popping in um, in the kneecap bone here but I don't want to worry about that too much until we've done all of our rotations because if I just hit E on my keyboard and get into my rotation value I can make that leg not lock the knee joint by rotating it down in Z and in Y so I won't come across that issue just yet and that is actually the way that we rotate um, when we walk so we're going to do rotations but we're not going to do um, rotations of X just yet we're going to go into our front view and we're going to do translations of X so we're going to translate our character left and right we'll do rotations and things later but it's best to do translation first and then rotation so go into your front view hold spacebar middle mouse button and drag down go to frame 1 okay so we're coming into our walk so on a passing position we're never ever um, completely our weight is never um, right centralized like it is at the moment so we're actually we've still got because this foot is in the air and there's no weight on this foot yet there's no contact it's just the foot's just about to touch the ground so the weight still needs to be carried by this leg what I mean by carried is if I was to draw like a line down the middle here uh, let's see okay so if I was to draw a line down the middle that's my center of gravity here and I need to push this character's weight across so that at frame one he the weight is more on the side of the leg so let me just grab that hip control again and just shift him over so that he looks like he's a little bit in balance in balance meaning the center of gravity if I was to draw a line down the y-axis would be in line with my toe okay so again just middle mouse button 32 paste you got the same value there and there when we go to frame 17 let's just do the opposite just drag that until y is over the toe and you're done you've done your left and right and he should be moving left and right okay now because we set a keyframe on here our values of X are um, going to be keyed into this 
value here as well so the x is also going to be translated and we don't want the weight to move so fast we want to delay the weight until around 26 I guess in our case so how would we do that well we can go to frame 22 and we can just drag it backwards still a little bit if you, if that's um, the way you want to do it um, but what I like to do is to go into my graph editor by holding, um, hitting my keyboard. I'm going to go over to my translation of x axis, and I'm going to look at this key that I set earlier in uh, in my x um, translation. Translation x on the left here. I'm going to select it. I'm just going to drag it up a bit until that hand is that 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 handle, that key that this this line this curve is smooth. Okay. What you'll notice here also is I've got this. Um, this line here. Basically in my graph editor I've said right I want to also view my show buffer curves. What that'll do is that every time I move a curve my will take a snapshot of what my curve looked like before I started playing around with it just in case I wanted to go back at some point. Okay so it's at view uh, show buffer curves. So let's close that down okay so now the weight is is being distributed um, a lot better okay so there's still there's still a lot of work to do obviously and I just go into this view for some reason I've got oh I think I've hit a keyframe on my rig when I was doing the recording and I've deleted I've cloned the rig in some cases, so sorry for that. Apologies, everybody. Let me just delete those controlling duplicates. Okay. And we're back to normal again. Let's just double check. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, Alright, so we've done that. Now, now we can do some rotations. Okay. So let's go into our front view again and we're gonna we're gonna go through rotations now whatever leg is in front which is in this case it's this leg on the right what you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate you're gonna favor this leg okay so this leg is always gonna be the favorite and this leg is gonna have less of a favorite um, to it so I'm gonna rotate my body um, control and Z let me just make that bigger and I'm also going to rotate in Y so I'm giving this guy here a lot more um, uh, he's seeing a lot more of the rotation of my body and that's how we walk basically so I'm just gonna again middle mouse button 32 and set a keyframe so we've got the same on each and at frame 17 I just want to do the opposite so I'm gonna rotate in Z and I'm going to rotate in Y. Okay. And if you play it back, you'll you'll start to notice that he's he's got a little bit more, a um, little bit nicer rotation there, which is great. Okay. So what we need to work on now is our up and downs. Okay, our Y translation. This controller here to add more character to him. We also need to get some weight into him. At the moment he's so very floaty. And if I was to just bring up my graph, you'll see in my Y curve how floaty he is. He's just blah blah blah. It's pretty boring stuff. So if you open up your graphs with me, the only way to really make him uh give him some weight is through this graph editor, through the curve itself. You have to understand how curve and a graph editor works before you can um, start putting weight into a character. You have to, you have to kind of understand uh, how it works. Okay, so if I was to explain it in simplest of terms, imagine having a ball and you're pushing it up this hill and you're pushing and you're pushing and you're pushing it up and you're at the top of the hill up here and you drop it down. The sharper the drop, the more weight 
or the more gravity is going to have an influence over that object falling off. Do you agree? Great, so and the same happens going up if if this if this was closer and it was um, uh, a mountain like this and you'd get up there really fast over time so time is six seven eight nine ten down here so I'd get up there really quickly so I'd have probably no weight and uh, it would look a little bit silly depending again depending on your character and what we do is in the basic bouncy ball tutorial is we have something called a hang time and the hang time is the distance between um, if I was to insert a key, oh by the way inserting a key you just middle mouse and you hold down I for insert on your keyframe on your, your um, curve and hang time in a bouncy ball animation is the distance between this keyframe and this keyframe through here okay so this is your your, your hang time here the ball's going to go up and it's going to hang in the air, hang in the air, hang in the air, and then it's going to drop down. And that's how we distribute weight. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to add some weight to him. So let's just say, okay, right, frame one, he is, uh, he is up and then he's coming down onto frame six. Then he's slowly going up again and then he's coming down. It's pretty smooth, pretty basic stuff. Okay, now the highest point in his walk cycle is actually not going to be um, the contact uh, positions. It's going to be just before the contact position at frame 12 in our case. And it's going to be in the passing position. You don't walk um, with your legs bent like this when, they, when they're passing. If you were to walk on the street and you try and get this pose people will think you're pretty weird so plus also your leg locks its joints and your hip everything is straight so we need to just grab that curve up here or you could drag it up either or I'm just gonna hold down shift to restrict myself to one axis and I'm gonna middle mouse button up until his leg goes straight round about there So, we've immediately noticed that he is obviously lighter than a heavier character would be and um, he, he, we're going to give him some hang time here and then we're going to drop him onto this weight, uh, this keyframe here at 22. So, we need to understand that if we were to drop this ball down this hill it would hit a, hit a rock here and bounce and that's not, that's not great when it comes to animation because you see this the Y curve is kind of slowing down and then it's going down again. You never want to have that. You want to have two keyframes running nicely into each other. You'll see that, oh, that little pop there. It's not great. Really bad animation. But I also want to give him some hang time. So I'm just going to grab that keyframe and I drag it up in the air. Okay. So let's see. We need to bring that down just a little bit there. Okay, so let's see what he looks like. Boom. That's better. Oh, he's got a little bit more weight coming down there, you'll see. Boom. 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 Okay, so now we need to do the opposite. If you turn your head sideways, this shape that you get here, you're going to want to create it here, blending into this shape. If that makes sense. I'll explain what I mean now. Okay, so let's say at frame 22, he's at his lowest point, and we need to get him up into the air here um, uh, for the passing position, which is in our case 27. So again, I'm just going to um, select my curve, middle mouse, hit insert I for um, a key, and I'm going to drag down, and I'm going to create the opposite shape that I got here. If I was to draw two lines across, I need to get the opposite shape here, and then they're going to blend in uh, to each other here. A nice way to see how this would work, and because we're doing walk cycles, is to do some great trick called uh, infinity animation. So you just go to view, and you turn on this thing called infinity. Okay. Now what that's going to do is it's going to Maya's going to say, right, we're going to um, 
if you if you were to just animate and just leave it this is it'll just stay still it'll just be constant constant value so we don't we want to we want to carry this curve over and over and over and just repeat itself over and over and over again so i'm going to select my root control node at the top and i'm going to select all my curves i'm going to do this thing called curves menu pre infinity which is before frame 1 and i'm just going to cycle and then i'm going to go curves post infinity which is after my animation is finished and I'm going to press cycle as well and you're going to see Maya is going to say okay the animation will just continue forever okay so and what you've noticed obviously immediately on our Y curve we've got a, a big problem here where these two keyframes are not going to work in a walk cycle in a loop okay so how do we fix that Jono? well we need to understand that basically we're 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 coming down in our weight here at frame 17 down into into frame 22 and in the passing position we need to now be up obviously he's in a passing position mode and then at frame 32 these two keyframes don't change the values of them all we need to do is make them blend into each other nicely this end one seems to have a um, a bit of a loop here and this one looks okay so I'm just gonna select that handle the side of the handle there on the right and I'm gonna middle mouse button and drag it down okay so that's that but I hear you say oh no it, the, the, the shape this shape isn't the same as as a shape and you're right it's not so what have we done wrong well we haven't done anything wrong the good thing about animation is is testing it out all the time seeing how uh, how it will work and getting a feel for it this is the stage when you're learning walk cycles when you're thinking okay you know maybe he doesn't know what he's talking about or whatever but trust me you go through these um, trials and errors all the time so our passing position value at frame 17 is in fact up here because we gave this guy some hang time in the air we um, we shifted that value which was down there if I was to leave that then my curve would start to look a little bit more the same so we need to select those two keyframes and in our case let's just drag them up into the air there Okay, so this passing position is going to be the same as this passing position so we can push that above that curve and this keyframe there let's just push it in line with this one just in our graph editor just to get a, a rough idea oh by the way if you hold shift and alt you and right mouse button you can squish and squash your, your graph editor and let's see how, how that's looking so there's okay so what we need to do okay so he's coming up pretty quick here and what we're going to do is we're going to add he's also slowing down in weight here and we don't really want that if you imagine a bouncy ball rolling down the hill it's slowing down around here so we want to we want to accentuate that we want to keep that weight nice and heavy so I'm going to grab that handle and I'm just going to push it so that this yellow curve is still pointing up so he's coming down hard onto that weight there and I'm going to do the same on this curve here Okay, and what you have some of you might have noticed is that the dis there's there's one more keyframe in in here in these values than in these values from frame 27 is 1 2 3 4 5 and here there is 1 2 3 4 5 6 Okay. So what we can do is we can um, move frame 12 by holding um, shift middle mouse button just dragging it one frame to the right so we get the same roughly the same amount of, of um, weight on our uh, animation curve there the, the same amount of hang time in the air okay so that's a bit better and he's got this 
nice bounce bump 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 okay so now your walk cycle is coming along you don't have to worry too much more about the y curve we're going to go into it a bit more detail a bit later so what do we need to do now well you'll notice these pops and what a pop is is something that people will always look for if you show them a walk they they see these these knee pops in the leg here and a pop is when a knee moves too far over one frame you need you basically you need the frame in between and Maya um, doesn't let you you do that very well sometimes well some rigs as well they give you trouble there's another pop there 30 and 31 okay so what can we do to fix this well there again there are lots of things but what I have noticed is my foot is um, even though my values are great everything's fine he is uh, a little bit in the air and ideally I'd want him to be contacting the ground at this f at this point and what's going to have happened is that because we've pushed his weight up he's actually moving away from the controllers so I just need to tone down the Y curve on his um, his passing positions his contact position so I'm going to select all three of them there and I'm just going to drag them down okay and now I know from experience that he's going to come up and he's not going to have a lot of hang time up here so we just grab those two and we turn them down as well just to keep everything and everyone happy so he's still got the same bounce but now the feet are going to be contacting when we do the rotations <laughs> at the right times okay great so maybe we can if I push him back, oh, it's not as great, it's not as exciting. Okay, maybe we have to tone this down just a little bit more. Just until the contact. We can always change this later. Okay, so select your Y curve again on that controller and just push, turn him down. We'll probably do it on a layer a bit later anyway. So, uh, if you get this, if your graph editor starts um, changing like that, you just select those ones that are doing funny business and uh, just hit smooth tangents there then select your handles and drag them down to get that little bounce of weight there okay okay right so now he's he's not as not as cool not as bouncy but i mean it's all up to you guys how you how you approach this I'm just teaching um, the basic walk and hopefully you'll get a nice feel for how he moves and yep he's he's okay it looked a bit better earlier we're gonna go with that and yeah I'm just gonna we're just gonna clean that foot up and make him cooler like that let's see what he looks like in perspective yeah it's much better that he's higher okay so that is uh, the basic walk I'm also going to give you an example of rotations I'm going to just tone down that Y that X um, translation there it's a little strong just for now we can always accentuate it later okay we've also got a pop happening here at frame 32 and 1 they're not exactly the same so I'm gonna favor whichever one is is better probably frame 32 and I'm just gonna middle mouse to frame 1 and set a keyframe and that should fix my pop that I was having there okay so that's that and that is as basic as it gets Okay, and for the next part of the tutorial, I am going to go into an advanced um, animation with Monty, and we're going to do blinks, and we're going to do squash and stretch, and um, 
foot rolls and toe rolls, and then we're going to add a double bounce to him and make him uh, kind of cartoony and give him some character. Okay, so that's all for now, and I uh, hope to see you in the next uh, tutorial. Thanks.